Well, good morning, everyone. I'll go, I'll go ahead and get us started. Uh, I'm Katie Lewis, Vice President of External Affairs at the Chamber for a Greater Chapel Hill Carborough. And it is my pleasure to welcome you this morning to the Regional Economic Development Forum. This is the third of 10 forums as part of our 2021 Critical Issues Series. Today, we'll discuss the Research Triangle region and what it means and why it matters for us to be part of this globally renowned multi-county region. We have several fantastic speakers today who will share timely updates and points of progress, reflections on the interconnectedness of our region and ideas going forward. Before we get the program started, a few housekeeping items. First, you've probably noticed your line is muted. We ask that you remain muted throughout the program, but please do share your video if you're comfortable doing so. We love to see your smiling faces. Second, given that this discussion is taking place online, we have a team of people helping manage today's forum. My colleagues Vanessa Watson and Jensen Anderson are on point for technology and to troubleshoot any potential hacking issues. Erin Nelson will serve as a presenter today and moderator, and I'm your host, and I'll monitor the chat. Please post your questions, comments, or even any ahas in the chat, and I'll help tee them up for the Q&A periods. Third, today's discussion will be recorded and we'll share the video through our YouTube channel afterwards. Everyone registered today will receive a courtesy email with a link to the video in the next few days. This forum, like many of our forums, is free for chamber members. If you're not a chamber member, but are interested in learning more, do drop a note in the chat and one of our staff members will be sure to follow up with you. Today's forum and the entire 2021 Critical Issue Series is coordinated by the Chamber's Government Affairs Committee. The chair of the Government Affairs Committee, Betsy Brucker Harris, would like to bring you welcome. Betsy is the IT project coordinator for Armacell, a global company that invented flexible foam and manufactures insulation solutions that conserve energy. Armacell has 300 patents, 3,000 employees, and 24 facilities around the world, including their head office for the Americas in Chapel Hill and a manufacturing facility in Mebane. Betsy? Thank you, Katie. Good morning, everyone. Apologies that I'm joining you from my car, but I'm very happy to be here. Uh, on behalf of the Chamber's Government Affairs Committee and its 26 volunteer members, it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's Regional Economic Development Forum. This is the third of 10 forums that our committee is coordinating this year, and it is a part of the 2021 Critical Issues Series. This series is designed to connect thinking leaders with leading thinkers. Our forum today will give us a chance to reflect on our region and our cross-country, cross-county boundaries to surface our shared interests. In addition to coordinating the Critical Issue Series, the Chamber's Government Affairs Committee convenes monthly to discuss policy matters and lead the Chamber's collective ad advocacy on behalf of our local business community. We have four pillars to our work. We are committed to retaining, recruiting, and growing employers, developing a talented workforce, improving the business climate and regulatory environment, and building and maintaining infrastructure. If you are interested in getting involved with our committee, please drop a note to me or Katie in the chat. With that, I want to share my appreciation to our distinguished guest speakers who have joined us today, and I hope you enjoy the program. Katie? Thanks, Betsy. Well, new this year, we're deepening our engagement with our elected officials and inviting an Orange County Commissioner to bring welcome at the top of each forum. Today, we're delighted to have Commissioner Earl McKee join us. Commissioner McKee is a lifelong resident of Orange County, he studied agriculture at NC State and has stewarded his family farm for 45 years. While running a successful diversified agricultural business, he also works with Summit Design and Engineering Services. His current project involves inspecting utilities on the 540 Toll Road Extension Project in Southern Wake County to ensure safe construction. In addition, he trains new employees to help them earn certifications to grow their career. He was elected to the Orange County Board of Commissioners as a District 2 representative in 2010 and voted chair by his fellow commissioners in 2015. He's an active member of the community and his church and is involved with several local organizations, including the JCs, Orange County Farm Bureau, and the Caldwell Fire Department. Through it all, he's been a champion for thoughtful economic development in Orange County, has pushed for the expansion of water and sewer to our economic development districts, and is lifting the important conversation 
about the value of economic development, how it diversifies our county tax base and eases the tax burden on homeowners. Commissioner McKee, thanks for joining us today. Please bring welcome to our participants. Thank you very much, Katie. I uh, would say good morning to everyone. And on behalf of the Orange County Board of Commissioners, I would like to thank each of you for taking time out of your busy schedules this morning for this important forum on economic development. Even though I currently am seated as an Orange County Commissioner, I still view myself as a farmer. But now, instead of growing crops and cattle, I am focused on helping grow local businesses and recruit existing companies to Orange County and this region in order to strengthen our collective economy. This forum will provide each of us the opportunity to hear from people on the leading edge of the efforts to expand economic opportunity for our residents throughout the region in a thoughtful, socially just, and sustainable manner. Our choice is clear. Grow the regional economy or watch it as it goes stagnant and withers away. Those who went before us made choices that resulted in our flourishing regional economy, and I believe that we, as leaders of our communities, can do no less. My current retirement job at Summit Design and Engineer, helping build an extension on the 540 toll road to Southern Wake County, allows me the chance to see the results of those leaders' forward-thinking vision as I make my morning and afternoon commute through Orange, Durham, and Wake County. Since joining the board in 2010, I've been involved in the recruitment of large companies such as Mornaga, Wegmans, and now Medline, the expansion of facilities at AKG and ABB, to name just a few, and is just as important to expand opportunities for local businesses uh, has been a focus for our board. To expand the business opportunity and address the remote uh, working environment brought on by COVID-19, uh, last fall, I requested the formation of a broadband task force to, current, uh, to uh, expand the broadband and, and connectivity availability for all of us. And currently am uh, co-chair of that task force with Commissioner Sally Green. The environmental environment now facing us and future challenges looking uh, down the road will require us to collaborate on strategies for success. And I believe that this event and scheduled future forums will provide the framework on which to build that success. I will conclude with thanks for allowing me to the opportunity to be a part of this forum and the Chamber for a Greater Chapel Hill Carborough its Government Affairs Committee. The sponsors and everyone involved in making this form a success deserve a heartfelt thank you. So I'll, I will conclude by wishing each of you a productive meeting experience and uh, expanding business opportunities and good health. And with that, I'm Earl McKee, a local farmer. Thank you, Commissioner McKee. Now it is my pleasure to recognize our sponsors who, as, as Earl said, uh, make today's event possible. First, Chapel Hill Media Group, including 97.9 The Hill, WCHL, your local radio station on 97.9 FM and 1360 AM, and chapelboro.com, your local news source. Uh, we're delighted to play a special welcome this morning from Aaron Keck, the host of this morning with Aaron Keck show, which is actually on right now, which is why he recorded a video. <laughs> His show is 6 to 9 a.m. on weekdays um, on 97.9 The Hill. Vanessa, if you could go ahead and roll Aaron's video. Hey, y'all. Hope you're having a good morning. This is Aaron Keck with 97.9 The Hill. As many of you know, I am the host of our brand new morning show, This Morning with Aaron Keck. Every weekday morning from 6 to 9, I get to be here in the studio keeping you covered in the Chapel Hill, Carborough, Orange County community, catching you up on local news, traffic, weather, sports, local music. We've got great interviews with folks, commentaries, fun features, and a whole lot more. So just a reminder, tune in every Every morning, every weekday morning from 6 to 9 for this morning with Aaron Keck. I've only got a few seconds because I am literally on the air right now, but I want to welcome you all to this regional economic forum. Thank you all for taking some time out of your morning to be at this important event. Thank you so much to the chamber for bringing it to us. 
and um, just want to say how proud we are at 97.9 The Hill and on our website, chapelboro.com, to be a presenting sponsor of this regional economic forum. So without any further ado, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm going to get back on the air, but hope you all have a good rest of your morning. Okay, next up, Duke Energy, one of the largest energy holding companies in the United States, providing power to nearly 10 million customers. Duke Energy was named one of the world's most admired companies by Fortune Magazine in 2020, and one of America's best employers by Forbes in 2019. With us today to bring welcome is Duke Energy Director of Durham Area Operations and Chamber Government Affairs Committee member, Rick Canavan. Rick, great to see you, please bring welcome. Thank you, Katie, and good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure as a representative from Duke Energy to serve as a sponsor and to be able to bring welcome as part of the Regional Economic Development Forum. At Duke Energy, we are determined to improve, to provide safer, more secure, and more reliable energy to all of our customers. To that end, we're making strategic, data-driven investments to improve reliability, help protect against cyber and physical threats, use more solar and clean energy, and provide you with the intelligent tools you need to make smart energy choices and save money. These ventures can be summarized in four key focus areas, which are improving reliability and resiliency, strengthening the grid against physical and cyber attacks, giving customers more options and control, and lastly, expanding solar and renewables. To briefly expand on the solar and renewables, Duke Energy's electric grid was engineered primarily to support the one-way flow of electricity from power plants to homes and businesses many years ago. As technologies like rooftop solar expand, they will require two-way flow of electricity on a much larger scale than the grid was designed to support. These investments will provide benefits today and in the years to come to expand on these solar and renewables and many other technologies as they expand over the years. I'll end by saying thank you from Duke Energy and once again, welcome to the Regional Economic Development Forum. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Next, Durham Tech. Durham Tech is the community college that serves our workforce needs here in Orange County. They have a beautiful 20 acre campus centrally located in Orange County near Hillsboro, and they will soon be able to double the square footage of their campus thanks to the Orange County commissioners who approved the first round of funding for their campus expansion. With us today, I believe is Durham Tech President J.V. Buxton. J.V., please bring welcome. Katie, good morning. Thank you very much. And we are proud to be members and sponsors of this series, which I think is a critical community service that you all provide. Uh, we're going to more than double that campus, thanks to these Orange County commissioners. And I want to thank Commissioner McKee, who has been uh, a warm welcomer of me as I've come into this job and I've had great conversation with him and appreciate his clear commitment to the residents in Orange County. Uh, I know we've got other folks from Durham here, and we've just got a terrific set of county commissioners in both systems really focused on economic mobility and development. And I just wanna say a couple things about that. First, I wanna thank the chamber for the role they've played in bringing some Orange County employers together around that expansion and let you know that we've had great conversations with employers in Orange County, but really regional employers thinking about the next phase of economic development and really where the labor market is moving uh, as we move further into COVID. And I thank those employers for joining in the chamber for hosting. As we think about our role in the triangle, I just want to talk about three commitments in about 30 seconds or less. One is, a, is our commitment to be serious about economic mobility and social mobility and recognize that despite all the great institutions, educational and employer, we still have real challenges with economic mobility in this region. We are, we, we are as challenged as any region in the country to make sure children who grow up poor don't remain poor. We think we can be an engine, a bridge to opportunity and an engine of opportunity with our employer partners and our institutional partners in the community. And we are absolutely committed to that goal. The second is recognizing the role of race in that challenge. And we are absolutely committed to making that a front and center issue and how we do our business and work with our partners. And then the third is our commitment not to act as a silo within the region, but to be a partner with the Wake Techs and the Piedmonts and the Vance Granvilles and the Alamances and the Central Carolinas. We are, we are all in this together to support our residents and to support employers. And we're gonna act as a united front so that you're working with the community college system, not trying to figure out where county lines and territories are. And I think as we think about the region today, it's important that you understand that the leaders of all these community colleges are committed to that kind of collaboration. So Katie, thank you very much. Appreciate the time today and thanks for the series. Thank you, JV. 
Next up, Susanna Dancy of Rockwood Development, representing Trinsic Residential Group today and the Ara Chapel Hill, which is the proposed 15-acre mixed-use development located at the corner of MLK Boulevard and Estes Drive. Susanna, please give us a quick snapshot of this fabulous project. Thank you, Katie. Good morning, everyone. Ryan Stewart, who is the director of the Carolinas Division of Trinsic Residential Group, since his greetings this morning. He's uh, sorry that he can't be here with you. So it gets, so it's my pleasure to talk with you a, a little bit about the Aura uh, mixed use project that is in the entitlement process with the town right now. As, as Katie mentioned, it's a 15 acre parcel at the corner of MLK and Estes Drive. It will, if approved, it will have 420 residential units, including both apartments and uh, for sale townhomes. 15,000 square feet of retail and commercial space, including co-working offices and meeting rooms that'll be available to the community. But most importantly, Aura will provide exceptional public spaces. It is designed for people first. This priority has shaped nearly every decision uh, in every design decision in this project. Almost 25% of the site is dedicated to parks in the center of the commercial area is an urban park or an urban plaza. What you see right now is the Central Park Green. Uh, that would serve as a flexible outdoor gathering space for leisure enjoyment and community cultural events, uh, maybe a farmer's market or community arts exchange uh, on the weekends. Um, it also has in the center a, a commercial, uh, in the center of the commercial area, there's a village plaza or an urban plaza that uh, where people can have coffee in the morning or wine or beer with their friends in the evening. Uh, the image you see now is the woodlands, which is a larger area on the Eastern end of the parcel that is part of the stormwater management system and is designed as a natural park uh, with trails. And again, all of that is about 25% of the 15 acre site. Uh, the, let's see. There will be sidewalks and greenways and shade trees and bicycle parking and even a push button crosswalk to get you across Estes Drive to the YMCA. Um, this project checks all of the boxes that Chapel Hill says it values. It has affordable housing guaranteed for 30 years. It's designed for easy access to the proposed bus rapid transit system along MLK. It meets green building standards. At minimum, it'll be a bronze uh, level. We're striving for silver certification. Uh, it provides a mixture of housing types and prices from one bedroom apartments. Uh, oh, that, I'm sorry, I'm gonna jump in and say that image is at the corner of, um, is at the intersection. So when you're at the stoplight uh, at on MLK, you can peek in to the activity that's happening there in the village, in the urban plaza. Um, but anyway, back to my checklist. It has a mixture of housing types and prices from one bedroom apartments uh, for rent uh, to three and four bedroom townhomes that are for sale. It will serve as a multimodal transportation hub connecting greenways and sidewalks and surrounding neighborhoods to the BRT station at this intersection of two of uh, Chapel Hill's primary uh, corridors. So we've gotten a lot of positive feedback about this concept and the design Yet there have been concerns, understandably, about Estes Drive and whether it can accommodate any additional traffic. I have good news. Uh, four, four traffic impact assessments that have been um, performed by three different engineering firms during the last 15 months say that this can happen. Uh, there are NCDOT funded improvements already planned for the intersection. Uh, that will address the existing problems. And our team would make additional improvements to accommodate this project. Uh, I won't bore you with the details now, but I'd be happy to answer any questions at another time. Uh, and, uh, and let's see, what else? We believe that Aura will set a new standard for quality place-based real estate development in Chapel Hill. Of course, we need town council to say yes to this project. So we ask that you voice your support to Mayor Hemminger and to town council. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. It's fitting to have such a green development uh, on Earth Day. <laughs> now onto the program. As I mentioned before, Chamber President and CEO Aaron Nelson will present today and moderate our discussion. He's a regionalist at heart, 
He's led our chamber for 20 years and pretty much knows all the backstory on everything going on in the triangle. So Aaron, take it away. Thanks, Katie. And thank you, Betsy and sponsor and Commissioner McKee. And good morning, everybody. Really good morning. Today's forum is going to be divided into four sections. First, I'm going to give an overview about um, our region and how our region was formed and what makes up the Research Triangle region. Second, Ray Trapp from the Research Triangle Foundation. The Research Triangle Park is going to share a, a quick vision on the next sort of generation of iterations for the Research Triangle Park. Third, we're going to hear from the economic development leaders from Orange, Durham, and Wake Counties. They're going to share points of progress and perspective from their counties. And then to wrap it up, Joe Malazzo from the Regional Transportation Alliance is going to talk about how all of that stitches together with a strong regional transportation infrastructure. I'm going to pepper them throughout with some questions. Um, Katie will help with gaining, gathering some of those questions that you are welcome to post into the chat. And without further ado, let's get to it. So let me share with you a short presentation about our region. Hopefully that looks exactly like it's supposed to. So first, um, economic development. Not to go back to the basics, but sometimes I think that we need to. This is a term that lots of people in our community use. Some people are economic development professionals, very familiar with the language. Um, I beg your pardon. We are seeing the slides on the left. If you could get into presenter mode, that'd be better. We would be happy to do that. Two screens sometimes makes that a challenge. Uh, do you see a single slide now? Yes, perfect. Excellent. So just a word on economic development. What are we saying when we, what do we mean when we talk about economic development? Well, the IEDC says it's a group of policies and programs that is designed to create and retain jobs and ultimately to facilitate economic growth. I like better the definition that comes from our California Association for Local Economic Development. The reason that we are doing this, the reason that people have dedicated their careers, uh, folks champion this work is we believe to generate uh, wealth which the community benefits from and for which there are community uh, gains. It's more than just a jobs program, an investment in growing your economy, enhancing the prosperity and quality of life for all residents. So when we're talking about regional economic development, we're looking at that from the triangle. I love, uh, this is the Dwight Bassett wheel of success. I like to describe it. He shares this a lot. We wanna produce jobs that generate income, that, fund, that enables people to purchase housing, that supports retail, generates taxes, funds education, uh, which then attracts workforce, producing jobs, et cetera. So let's talk about our research triangle region. Uh, many of you are familiar with its origin, but some of you not. These four, three universities we described originally was Duke and UNC uh, and North Carolina State sort of formed the triangle. That is the scalene uh, triangle that for our region. It's really now four universities and community colleges and a robust network of higher education institutions, UNC, Duke, Central, and State. Our airport lives in the middle of it. And then in the 1950s, bold leadership from the governor of the state of North Carolina, then Terry Sanford and others imagined a research triangle park that would live in the middle. And over time, our region has become known as the Research Triangle Region. Many people from outside actually can't name the cities within the region, but can describe the region. Similarly, in the way that uh, I know about Silicon Valley, but I can't name for you any of the cities that are in Silicon Valley. I understand it is sand something else and sand something and sand something else. Um, uh, so many of them will hear the triangle first, uh, particularly internationally, and then learn about our communities once they get closer. The Research Triangle Park in the middle, I loved their logo transitions, the original one with the Carolina and the Duke and the state colors similar to their current. And look, they're building even reflects uh, that triangle that makes up our Research Triangle region. So what is the Research Triangle? Uh, traditionalists would give us the three counties, Orange, Durham, and Wake that we just described. But the Research Triangle region means lots of things to lots of different people. So let's just talk a little bit about it. From our perspective at our chamber, in Orange County, serving Orange and Northern Chatham, we think about the labor shed. So where are people driving to and from in order to support this local economy? We think about Alamance, Durham, Wake, and Chatham. Now the folks in Alamance will probably more likely describe themselves as part of the triad, the Greensboro region. The Triangle J Council of Governments would say, well, let's pick up Lee, Sanford, and Moore, 
Pinehurst, as well as Johnson, thinking about the commute and the labor shed that comes into Wake County. But the view of what the triangle is, is different to lots of people. The Research Triangle Regional Partnership used to be a construct of the state. The state funded it. It named what counties were in it. It is now a membership organization. And these are the members. Orange County is not currently a member of it. Neither is Vance County. That's the hole in the middle between Granville and Warren. Uh, and its job is regional marketing uh, and helping facilitate regional cooperation. It has a dues-based model. Um, and uh, Orange County has not been a member since that process began. With respect to data and planning, we really think about um, this region in two different ways, things called MSAs. Some of you hear that term MSA frequently, a metropolitan statistical area. It used to be the triangle was one MSA. 20 years ago, it was called the Raleigh-Durham-Chapel Hill MSA. Well, they broke us apart and there's now the thing called the raleigh Cary MSA, which includes the data from Franklin Johnson and Wake and then a thing called the Durham Chapel Hill MSA. So often if you're reading the Triangle Business Journal or maybe even USA Today, and they say something like, Durham has more PhDs per capita than anywhere in the United States, what they mean is the Durham Chapel Hill MSA. And that includes Person, Granville, Durham, and Chatham. So this is how we determine what our median wage is, decide what affordable housing is, is data gathered this way. Many folks are working to try to create to recombine our MSAs into uh, a single one that represents the triangle, y'all. It is so much easier when we have a single set of data and we're working better together. This is a thing called the CSA, a combined statistical area, and you can pull data on our region um, with this set of counties. Let me just hit a few more things on what is bringing us together and maybe even keeping us apart a little bit as a region. This is the MPO. You may hear about the DCHC MPO, holy cow, but that's Durham, Chapel Hill, Carborough Metropolitan Planning Organization. And they plan transportation for all of Durham County, Hillsborough, Chapel Hill, and Northern Chatham. But oddly, not connected to Campo, the capital area metropolitan planning organization. They plan transit for five counties uh, and in that geography that you see there. So not only is it hard to plan our transportation and how we flow between our counties, but we've created some artificial systems that have made it even harder over time. Making it no easier is the NCDOT puts the triangle in four separate DOT districts, four separate funding systems, four separate planning setups. And you'll see that uh, Durham, Orange, and Chatham all in different DOT districts. Now, all of these sharings that I'm with, these are all created and they can be uncreated, <laughs> they can be changed. And I hope that some of you, if you're so inspired, might work to think about how we might redraw some of these lines to make us function better. Final word on workforce development and workforce investment boards, which help invest federal funds and other funds to plan a talent pipeline. There are several, there's one called Wake Johnson that works together, the capital area workforce development. There's one called Triangle South, you put Chatham, Lee, Harnett, and Sampson. Why Sampson? But Sampson also into that. Durham has its own workforce development board. And then Orange has been placed with Alamance, Randolph, Montgomery, and Moore. This is the workforce development planning organization that supports Orange County. Uh, if I had a magic wand, this is not how I would wish uh, to put together our regional workforce strategy. And as you can see, again, the triangle in four different workforce development boards. And I'm hopeful that some conversation can take place in the future about how we might realign those to be a better reflection of our labor shed, commute patterns, uh, and shared triangle economy. So this is what I think about most often as the core of the Research Triangle region. And as we work through our panelists, I am hopeful that they'll talk a little bit about the triangle, but in my mind for now, we're gonna use this as the group uh, that we intend to talk about. We talk a little bit about regional employment. We pulled data for Orange, Durham and Wake counties. Uh, leading these areas are healthcare, for which there are 118,000 people working right now, professional and scientific and technical, education services, retail trade and accommodations. Those are the five top employment industries uh, in our triangle. Currently, there are 65,000 jobs open uh, in this region, 65,900 uh, 
hundred. Um, and there are 54,000 people uh, claiming unemployment benefits currently in this same region. Two things you can see, one, there's gonna be a mismatch, but even if everybody unemployed took every single job that there was, there would still be a delta of unfilled work uh, in our community. And of course, folks are not trained uh, properly to fill all of those jobs. We take a look at current job openings. Right now, healthcare and social assistance has 10,600 open jobs in the triangle in these three counties. And you can see the other ones, what their challenges are in terms of finding labor. This is by sector. Let's take a look at actual jobs. The top right now is software developers in our region, 2,600 vacancies. Registered nurses, 2,485 currently listed posted jobs where folks are looking for a worker. And you can see what the others are in the top five. That's changed since January 2020. So at a pre-COVID economy, we've added 90, there's 900 more nursing jobs open today than there were in the pre-pandemic. And then you can see some of those other challenges. It's a growing community, growing market and healthcare in particular, really struggling to find the workers that it needs uh, in order to be successful. Let me just give you two more minutes on a few more things and we're gonna move on to our speakers. We took a look at current openings. Thank you, Katie, for pulling this data. Right now, Wake Med, if you take a look at the full region, UNC Health and Duke are the top organizations with most amount of vacancies currently hiring for their positions. And then you can see IBM, UNC Equivia, formerly, um, uh, and well, then Cisco and North Carolina State, Lowe's, Facebook, you can see, et cetera. But a tremendous amount of vacancy and a real need uh, for the work of our community colleges and others. Uh, to bring our economies, uh, training folks for the jobs that are available. Uh, in Orange County, just a word, I appreciate um, uh, JB talking about issues of race. I just wanna say a little bit about minority owned firms in the triangle. These are the amount of firms as estimated by the Census Bureau that are minority owned firms by county, uh, Durham County leading the way. But if you take a look at percent of all firms that are minority owned in each county, uh, this is the information that we have. Again, Durham leading the way with Wake at about 15, but Orange and Chatham at 12%. We want to drill down a little bit more into uh, our region. Women-owned enterprises, Carborough, uh, head and shoulders above the rest, as is Orange County. When we estimate Black-owned enterprises, there's much work to be done. In Durham, only 7% of all firms are Black-owned. And uh, you see Chapel Hill's numbers there. Orange County's numbers, oddly, are not uh, collected or reported in the data that we had. But in terms of impact on the economy, still less than 1% of all sales and less than 1% of all payroll by Black-owned enterprises in the triangle, uh, similar uh, for Hispanic-owned enterprises. Final word um, that I'm going to uh, maybe uh, just share a little bit about our commute patterns. What draws us together as this triangle is that people are moving constantly between our market. 46,000 people into Orange County every morning, every morning. and 37,000 people driving out of Orange County every morning is pre-pandemic numbers. And they are driving everywhere. More people are working uh, in uh, Durham over time and Raleigh are the two areas for which there's the largest amount of growth of where Orange County residents work. We'll just show you the Chapel Hill numbers. Chapel Hill grows in pre-pandemic times by 30,000 people during the day. And they are, other than Chapel Hillians working in Chapel Hill, they are principally driving to Durham uh, and to Raleigh. So if you care deeply about how Orange County citizens are faring, then you should care a lot about the Raleigh and the Durham economy. Those are the people employing many of our local residents. Where are they coming from? More people are driving into Chapel Hill from Durham to work than are Chapel Hillians working in Chapel Hill. And Carborough, similar. A lot of outflow uh, to other places. And um, there are three times as many people, Carborough residents working in Durham than there are Carborough residents working in Carborough. And the case is also that the jobs are being filled by people driving in. Here is Hillsborough's just a final that I'll share with you is um, Hillsborough sends more people to Durham uh, to go to work 
um, or more people coming from Durham uh, to work in Hillsborough uh, than folks living in Hillsborough. So I share that to say a super connected economy. We drew these county lines in the 1700s and 1800s, well before we knew what the labor shed was gonna be. And so I'm happy now uh, to move into a conversation about um, our uh, region. So let me invite um, my new friend. We're so glad that he has relocated to our uh, region. He comes to us most recently from Greensboro. His name is Ray Trapp. Ray Trapp is the new vice president at uh, the Research Triangle Foundation. Uh, Research Triangle Foundation is who owns and manages RTP. Um, and he's already proven himself to be a tremendous collaborator since he has arrived. RTP, y'all, is designed to bring our universities together, our employers together, the citizens of our region uh, together. As you may know, it is 7,000 acres, 55,000 employees, more than 300 companies, Biogen, Cisco, Credit Suisse, Fidelity, IBM, RTI. And Ray is here to share some of that vision and to bring his experience um, for where he was most recently. So most recently, uh, Ray was working at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University as a director of external affairs. That's where he got his master's degree. He served in the US Navy as an interior communications specialist. He was an elected Guilford County commissioner. We'll talk offline about what that process was like where he served for six years as a Guilford County commissioner. And so he's bringing exceptional understanding about how universities and government and business work. And we're so glad to have him. Uh, Ray Trapp, will you talk to us about what's going on at the park? Absolutely. Thank you, Aaron. And I want to start by thanking the wonderful host of this event and the sponsors, um, Aaron, Katie, and the rest of the chamber staff. You are always amazing to work with. And I'll also start out by saying, when Katie sent me the run of show and the time I had allotted to talk through the vision for this great organization that I work for in Research Triangle Foundation, I had no idea how I would get through it in that time. But an example of regionalism that we're already seeing, Aaron, you've pretty much done most of my first slide. So if we can go to that next slide. Thank you, Aaron. That is regionalism on display. You've accurately described what RTP is. And so that, of course, is 7,000 acres, 55,000 plus employees, and over 300 corporations. Um, when we're talking about vision and we're talking about where we are going, I think it's always important that we look at the mission and the reason that the Research Triangle Foundation and Research Triangle Park actually exist. If you can go back to that first slide, I just want to lay out the three pillars of our mission and that is to facilitate collaboration between the Triangle Universities. When we first started, as Aaron pointed out, those were the three tier one research institutions here in the Triangle. So that was UNC Chapel Hill, that was Duke, that was NC State. But now that looks different. That includes NC Central, that includes Shaw, that includes St. Aug, it includes Meredith, it includes Peace. It also includes our community colleges. It includes Duke. It also includes, uh, I'm sorry, Duke, uh, includes Durham Tech, it includes Wake Tech, it includes the Halo counties in their community college organizations as well. And so that is what that expansion of what we started and where we started to where we are now. We promote co cooperation between the universities and industry. That very much is at home with research, but it's also very much at home with conversations with Durham Tech and with Wake Tech and creating that workforce and being having that flexibility from the community college system that when the corporate site selectors come in and ask for certain trainings and specific to those industries and ramping up the workforce and the labor force for what they need and those requirements that they need to be successful, that we're ready as a region to respond to that and respond in a timely way. And last but not least, this is the one that I love and this is the one that gets me excited every day when I wake up. It's an economic impact for the residents of the state of North Carolina. Uh, I am uh, born in uh, North Carolina and I believe in the state of North Carolina and it's not just the same from Murphy to Manio, but absolutely believe in the state 100% and 100% believe in this region. And this region is the economic driver for the state of North Carolina. Next slide. What we do, 
Um, essentially, this is why I'm here. Uh, I am vice president of strategic engagement, which is a fancy way and a fancy title to say that I am the collector, the connector to all of the things that we discussed earlier on and the universities, the community college system, the community, the government, the region as a whole. I serve as the connector for that. And people always ask me, hey, well, what does the foundation do? I'm familiar with RTP, but what does the foundation do? As Aaron said, we are the stewards of the park. We own a lot of land in the park, but we also we lead, facilitate, promote and create opportunities for facilitation. Um, that's education, that's social, that's fitness, that's STEM programming, that's stewards of the park, making connections, maximizing opportunities and amplifying discoveries and research and economic outcomes for the region and the state. We promote the reputation of this region as a world premier innovation center. Next slide. Getting into it, uh, we talk about 2020. 2020 and the COVID-19 pandemic was something that no one could expect. But I also want to talk about the growth that we've had in the park during 2020. That slide is absolutely right. $3.5 billion of investment and over 2,000 jobs in 2020 alone during the pandemic. So you see the companies that have chose to invest and make a commitment to this region and to this area during the pandemic. Lilly, Grail, Beam Therapeutics, Apoject, Duke University School of Medicine, DPR Construction, the list goes on and on. People are continuing to choose this region for a reason. And we have to continue to promote that and continue to advance that and show why we are the region that we are, that people would make billions of dollars of investment in this region during a global pandemic. Next slide. The vision for RTP. Um, this is Frontier RTP. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Frontier RTP, but this was established in 2015. At that time, RTP had about 200 corporations. But as I mentioned at the outset of this presentation, we are now over 300 corporations, meaning 120 companies, a third of the total corporations in RTP are located in Frontier RTP. These are recycled and upscaled and upfitted old IBM buildings that were sitting on our campus, um, just sitting there. So the idea came, what if we create a co-working space? And that number, that figure that's right there in the center of that slide, zero cost to use the working space and meeting space is absolutely true. There is zero cost to use our open co-working space and meeting space. We wanted to promote entrepreneurship and give entrepreneurs a place where they could call their own and they could continue to work on what advances their cause and their mission as a business, not have to think about overhead, the things that stop and hinder entrepreneurs and their companies from growing from the outset. But here's your space. Here's your opportunity to think about what you need to do to excel. We don't call this a collab space because what we do is just provide space. Anything else is up to these entrepreneurs to do. So again, 120 companies, over 1,600 direct jobs right here in Frontier RTP. This concept and back to our mission and why we exist, this concept we've moved and we've taken this model to Warren County. Again, speaking about regionalism and how we operate as a region in the triangle and the Halo counties outside of the triangle. We have what is called Frontier Warren, which is this model in Warren County. Now, the they are fully leased even during COVID. They broke ground and they uh, named their facility and went forward during COVID, right at the start of COVID. And a year later, they are 100% leased up. And that entrepreneurship looks different than the entrepreneurship that is here in the triangle. But that entrepreneurship in Warren County is just as important, just as vital. And so we look to take this around to the state of North Carolina and implement Frontier RTP from Frontier Warren to different areas in the state of North Carolina where we can continue to press this model for. Next slide. Boxyard RTP. Um, our president and CEO, Scott Levitan, loves to say that this is a project that only a foundation could love. It's a $9 million investment by the RTF, our foundation, which has no return other than being a great amenity 
and a destination point for the citizens of the Triangle. Anyone that has had folks that have worked in the park, and I know everyone that I've known that's worked in the park, they have one complaint. If I want to go get something to eat, if I want to unwind after work, if I want to go spend money, I have to leave the park to do that. And so what we've created here is the upscale 35 shipping containers that we've repurposed into the facility that you see in front of you. It'll be 12 unique local restaurants and retailers that will be right in RTP. So now you no longer have to leave the park in order to go grab something to eat. Full stream brewery will be there. All of these things will be right into the park. And again, this isn't for us to be selfish and hold this for just the corporations within the park. This is described to be a destination point for citizens throughout the Triangle region. Next slide. Um, President Buxton talked about economic mobility, social mobility, and dealing with issues of race when we talk about that and how we expand on that as a region. So as you look at this picture, these are the entrepreneurs that will occupy the spaces in Box Yard. They look like the region. This is the region. From Carburito to BU uh, Coffee to Lawrence's Barbecue to all the people Buzzy Bakes in between, this is what the Triangle region looks like. And these are the entrepreneurs that will take up that space. For many, this will be their first brick and mortar location. Many have started in food trucks. They've started doing vintage spaces and pop-ups, but this will be their first brick and mortar location. We took on this cost and the upfit of this again. So these entrepreneurs with these great products and bringing this addition and this amenity to the park would not have to worry about that overhead. We took that on so they could be successful in expanding their business and ultimately expanding the amenities that we have here in the region. We just made our final announcement, Meet and Graze, which is a black woman owned charcuterie restaurant, will take up that last box and will occupy that last space there. So these are amazing stories. This is the fabric of our community. This is what makes up everything that is the triangle. So as we go on to that next slide, this is something that we wanna to continue to hit. When we talk about diversity and we talk about uh, social mobility, uh, economic mobility, this isn't something that we're just talking and not walking at the foundation. So we made it a goal last year that we would improve our MWB numbers, which are minority women in business enterprise numbers. We adopted the Durham County Disparity Study from January of 2015, which said that 25% of all spending from Durham County would be with MWBE companies and corporations. So that was the goal. I am proud to say, and I want to say that the staff here at the foundation has done an amazing job, but as of the end of Q1 for 2021, we are at 32.57% spending with minority women in business enterprises. So not just talking the talk, but actually walking the walk. If you look at the shortfalls, there's still some shortfalls in spending with black Americans and some other small shortfalls that we need to make up. But the thing is that we're committed to doing this, just as the region is committed to amplifying diversity and being a part of the change. That's what we're doing here at the foundation. On to the last two, and these are amazing. Hub RTP, I call this downtown, $1.5 billion of investment. Um, this will be our amazing live, work, and play. People will actually reside in the park for the first time ever. Next slide. Again, a community destination. We invite everyone to come and take part of this. You see the open space, the green space, again, being a part of the community. Next slide. And finally, our regional initiatives mobile um, mobility, what that looks like, Joe Malazzo's on and someone who's done this for two decades, who's going to talk about that and what that looks like. STEM workforce pipe development, um, inclusionary workforce housing, diversity, equity and inclusion collective, all of these things we seek to be a partner in with the region as we move forward. So that is all I have. Um, Thank you, Ray. <laughs> go on forever. Thank you. Ray, that was absolutely wonderful. Uh, Ray and I are going to be on the radio live this afternoon uh, around 4.30.
we'll tell you the exact time. And we're grateful uh, to have him with us. What a great partner uh, to really reach out on behalf of the park. We are going to push on to our next speaker, Dre, and see if there are questions for you and I later. If not, we will discuss some of the questions on our radio uh, interview later today. Thanks for being with us. We're now going to move to segment two and talk about our individual counties and do a county by county overview. We're going to start representing Orange County Economic Development is Johnny Morris. Johnny is the vice chair of the Orange County Economic Development Advisory Board. He's a member of the Chamber's Government Affairs uh, Committee. He's former chair of our board of directors at the Chamber of Commerce, and he is president and broker in charge of Morris Commercial. Johnny, it is wonderful to have you with us. Uh, please give us a quick overview of what's happening in Orange County. Thank you, Aaron. Um, and um, Good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to be here with you. And uh, on behalf of our advisory board and the economic development department, I'm pleased to provide a brief overview uh, and update on uh, what's going on uh, within Orange County. Um, we can go to the next slide. This is a, uh, our roster of our 10 member advisory board. And I think you'll see that uh, the businesses that are represented are a very diverse, broad uh, group of individuals in, uh, in interest. Next slide, please. We, um, we obviously serve uh, as advisory and consulting and support uh, group to the Economic Development Department, uh, which is directed by Steve Brantley with a very capable staff. Uh, they are, of course, housed uh, in um, the county seat of Hillsborough. You'll see their mission statement. I won't read it to you verbatim. You can take a look at it. Uh, as Aaron mentioned earlier, there are a number of uh, definitions of economic development, but I think this serves, serves our mission uh, well. So um, we'll move on to the next slide. This will come as no surprise to you. Our top uh, industries by employment, uh, our major economic drivers being UNC, and UNC Health um, of some 80,000, um, followed by retail trade, accommodation, hospitality, food services, follows that uh, along with the others that, um, that you see. This is really a bird's eye view of, um, of our three economic development districts. This was uh, adopted by a number of years ago by the county commissioners as focal points for uh, for economic development uh, growth in that sector. And the next slide will show us a little more detail. Uh, they're broken down on the west side, uh, adjacent to Mebane is a Buckhorn EDD. This is where many of you are familiar with the uh, Morinago, uh, the Japanese candy factory, which was built, um, probably built first, uh, with the exception of uh, maybe uh, ABB, but this is, um, they kind of planted the seed there through the use of Article 46 monies, which is our, our sales tax monies that are allocated to economic development. Uh, sanitary sewer was extended into this area to uh, provide for, for future growth. Um, we'll, we'll note in a moment about Medline, which is under construction now with 1,200,000 square feet uh, in that district which is really the largest and most active uh, of, the, of the two EDDs. You'll see up on the bullet points up top that um, we have approximately 2,000 acres amongst the, the three districts, which uh, interestingly is 3% of the total Orange County acreage. Um, the Hillsborough EDD is, um, that's where the UNC hospital is located along uh, Churton and, um, and I-40. You may be aware that uh, re a recent approval of 160 acre research triangle logistic park uh, has taken place and that's south of I-40. And um, they will need to extend sewer beneath I-40 and that funding has been allocated. So that, that is well on its way to becoming a reality. So that's gonna be an exciting industrial park and, and distribution center. On the Eno EDD, which is the Eastern portion adjacent to uh, Durham, uh, remains under an interlocal negotiation uh, for utilities. And we're hopeful that 
that will be completed uh, in the near future and that'll be poised for uh, development as well. This is a good list of recent uh, projects and uh, job creations. The ABB facility along I-40, uh, I-85 recently added, made an addition of 200,000 square feet and they are targeted to uh, grow the job creation uh, by, what is that, 26? Um, the Medline, which we just talked about, you, you can get a little filtered view of that project from the interstate. Um, again, they're underway, well underway with a million two hundred thousand square feet of uh, warehouse and distribution center. They are there in the medical device business. They're going to grow the job creation by two hundred and fifty. Piedmont Metalworks um, in that um, Buckhorn EDD growing to forty two jobs. And those of us, particularly in Chapel Hill, are familiar with the recent opening of Wegmans. And uh, they had you know, a goal of 350 jobs. And now I'm, I'm told um, by Steve Brantley and his staff, they have, they, have, uh, they have attained that goal. So they are now at full employment. WellDot, which is a uh, health IT firm uh, on West Franklin Street in Chapel Hill, uh, anticipates growing their job creation by 400. So, you know, bottom line, we're gonna see more than a thousand jobs created in Orange County with these entities uh, in just the next few years. So that's an exciting time and, um, and there'll be more to come. I, uh, I, take, I take real pride in, in showing you this slide. This is um, what took place last year uh, with the grant, uh, small business grant program and loan program. I was on the grant committee, so I, saw this take place firsthand. And so you see that we awarded approximately a million dollars to 122 um, uh, businesses, um, 188 businesses. Um, and that was really fulfilling. Unfortunately, we had more applicants than we, than we, could, we could have awards, but this came at a great time as you, as you can well imagine. And, uh, and these varied, the grants varied from Twenty-five hundred to ten thousand dollars per per business. The areas of opportunity. Then certainly, moving forward, we anticipate additional federal funding uh, to the county to implement a number of these long long-term recovery strategies, and uh, including uh, the grant programs. We want to capitalize on the trends that are emerging in warehousing and food distribution, manufacturing, you know, throughout the country and certainly in, in the triangle area, uh, the industrial sector is the most active sector of commercial real estate. So we're seeing a lot of activity and a lot of interest um, in, uh, in, in Orange County. Great news that UNC is gonna come back in full force uh, with the students uh, and faculty. And I understand they're being, uh, there's going to be a mass vaccination of the students maybe going on now. I don't know, but soon. Uh, so that's great news, particularly for our downtown areas. Um, so we need that economic growth. What to watch for in the future. Uh, and we're seeing it now. We're seeing a gradual recovery uh, with the, particularly in the hospitality and the restaurant sector. Um, in my business, we deal with it a number of these businesses. And so we've seen a slow return, very slow return. Um, I see where Governor Cooper may lift a lot of these uh, constraints on these businesses come midsummer. That'll be well received. So we look forward to that uh, focus on the county on long-term recovery measures. And you see that list from affordable housing uh, to our, our local uh, natural resources and local food supply. Continued investment by private investors uh, to consider non-residential projects, particularly in these three EDDs. I understand from Steve Brantley, he tells me he is absolutely the busiest he's ever been in his 10 years um, on the job as director. And that speaks to what's going on in the entire triangle and, and the attractiveness of, of being here. Um, so, we're, uh, we're excited about that, and I think we'll see uh, some more good announcements uh, coming up soon. 
And then, of course, the hiring efforts by those uh, groups that we just mentioned. And um, so that's an exciting time. Um, we don't have that many more acres left in Orange County uh, designated for, for economic development. But um, with Steve's good work and uh, that of his staff, uh, we're hopeful that we're going to we're going to see a number of good things uh, bubble up in the uh, in the next year or so. So Thank once you. again, I, I appreciate having this time to speak to you, and um, we have good news ahead. I'm certain. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johnny, and I, I really appreciate you pointing out. You know, the county was thoughtful 20 years ago, 30 years ago, to identify these economic development districts. They are just three percent of the county's total land area. Yep. Uh, but some people forget that uh, that we made this arrangement in order to protect our rural character. We would concentrate development in economic development districts. And I know there's been some pressure to do some non-economic development things in those districts. We appreciate you and Steve and others really trying to carry forward that vision uh, to keep those districts for uh, economic development. Johnny, thank you for your leadership for so many years. Let's move on to our friends at Durham County. Um, forgive me one second as I pull up. Ryan Reagan is our Vice President for Economic Development, Greater Durham Chamber of Commerce. He is with us just months now, or maybe just one month now, came recently from our friends in Asheville, Buncombe County, uh, he, where he served in a very similar role. Uh, he has also played a leadership role in regional uh, economic development. He was an economic development director for an 18 county region in the southeastern part of the state of North Carolina. We're grateful to have him with us, uh, Ryan. Welcome. Thank you, Aaron, for the for the kind kind words, and thank you to Aaron and Katie for sending the invite um, for me to appear before you guys today. As Aaron noted, I'm about two and a half months in, so even as the new guy, I greatly appreciate them uh, valuing my input today. Um, so I uh, just th thought I'd start at a high level um, for those of you who aren't too uh, oriented with our economic development program at uh, at the Durham Chamber. Um, what you see on the screen here are our three primary industry clusters. Uh, life sciences is obviously our bread and butter in Durham. Uh, thanks in large part to the presence of RTP, about three fourths of RTP is in Durham County and some of the other institutional assets in the life sciences world. Uh, we see a lot of success in, in the life sciences industry, uh, but also on the office side, primarily uh, financial services and information technology. Uh, we have had uh, growing success in, in developing those clusters. And uh, this slide isn't meant to imply that we don't see success in under other um, target industries. For example, uh, advanced manufacturing, we have a number of those companies thriving in Durham, uh, GE Aviation, Cree, uh, AW North Carolina, and auto parts manufacturing in North Durham. Uh, but most of our economic development success in Durham is gonna fall within these three, three buckets. Uh, and speaking of success, we'll go to the next slide. Um, here are some of the uh, a select few success stories we've had this year since January. Uh, the great uh, great thing of this slide is that there's a good mix between both existing industry uh, expansions and new business recruitment. Um, so Biogen, Merck, and Fidelity have already um, have long had a presence in Durham, and they recently announced uh, expansion efforts that will create a lot more jobs in Durham. Uh, Adverum uh, Biotechnologies is a Silicon Valley-based company um, in the gene therapy space that uh, in January announced their plans to bring uh, new jobs and capital investment to Durham. And uh, of course, the, the big kahuna there in the middle, uh, Google, um, a small tech startup that you may have heard of from uh, before. Uh, big announcement in, in Durham uh, about a month, uh, month ago at this point. Um, hard to emphasize what a, what a big deal this is for Durham and more importantly for the Triangle region. Um, I've, had, I've said varying, varying degrees of this to other people, but um, once Google lands in your community, lands in your region, uh, then all bets are off. Um, we, uh, the floodgates really have the potential of opening now um, there's no community in this country that, that we cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe against for, for jobs and investment. And uh, certainly if we're good enough for Google, we're, we're surely going to be good enough for a lot of other companies. Uh, one thing on, on the Google announcement that I'd like to linger on just for a moment uh, that y'all may underappreciate a little bit. Um, so I, I view a lot of, um, I view the announcement of Google to locate in, in, in Durham and in the Triangle as a, as a bit uh, symbolic because that announcement happened on March 18th. Uh, which is almost five years to the day that HB2 was passed in North Carolina. Uh, those of you who are in the Triangle um, uh, know what a difficult time that was for economic development uh, in the Triangle specifically. And, uh, you know, the topic of diversity, equity, inclusion is an ongoing conversation that 
uh, we can never master too too well. We can never have too inclusive of a community. Um, so I look forward to continuing those conversations at the community level and the regional level. But Google's plans to invest in our region and in our community, um, to me, it has a little bit of a validating effect that what we're doing is certainly on the right track. Um, it's hard to think of a Fortune 100 company that values diversity, equity, and inclusion more than Google. Uh, so again, if we're good enough for Google, uh, I feel like things are moving in the right direction. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this is a certainly oversimplified slide here, but just want to show you the general pockets of development activity in Durham, uh, or at least where we see the most economic development uh, activity. Uh, I'll start from the south and work my way north. Uh, my friend Mary Trapp stole all of my RTP talking points, but just to reiterate some of them, um, uh, RTP, uh, truly the crown jewel of our region. Um, as Ray said, over 300 companies there that are employing uh, over 55,000 employees. Um, I owe Ray and Scott Levitan a, a holiday card every year because they certainly make my job a lot easier in, uh, in recruiting companies to Durham. Um, and if it's not clear, uh, within RTP, there is all manner of development opportunities uh, from uh, pad ready sites to highly amenitized buildings. Um, Ray also mentioned the Hub RTP uh, development. Um, hard for words to do, do this justice, but it's a, a great opportunity for us in Durham and certainly in the Triangle as well. Uh, 45 acres, uh, quintessential live, work, play, mixed use development. Uh, there will be retail, multifamily, residential, a hotel, about 14 acres of open uh, green spaces, um, uh, trailways. It, it's going to be really phenomenal. And for me professionally, what I'm most excited about is, of course, the 2 million square feet of Class A office space that will be going vertical uh, at Hub RTP. It will totally transform our ability in Durham and our, our efforts in, in the Triangle to attract um, uh, you know, some, some high-end office users, um, kind, of like a, kind of like a Google. Um, so, so very much looking forward to working with Ray and his, uh, his boss, Scott Levitan, to make sure that Hub is the, the big success, success story that we know that it can be. Um, and of course, just around RTP, I don't have it uh, called out here, but there's all manner of um, industrial parks and office parks uh, and some of those major thoroughfares you guys may be familiar with. So along TW Alexander, South Miami Boulevard, uh, when you get on the freeway heading into town, uh, a lot of industrial property off of Ellis Road as well. Uh, so that little corner of Durham is certainly where we see the most activity. Uh, but we're also very excited about what's going on in downtown Durham. Uh, so the Durham ID, this stands for the Durham Innovation D District. It's actually multiple buildings along a block in Durham off of uh, Morris Street, uh, just a stone's throw from our offices at the chamber. Um, and this is where Google is going to be standing up their uh, engineering hub that I, I referenced on the previous slide. Uh, they'll be taking down uh, roughly half a million square feet of office space. Hard to think of a company that's more innovative than Google. So it's great to have Google anchoring that, uh, that, uh, that corner of Durham and, and they will tr uh, surely have a transformative impact on all of downtown. Uh, another notable office um, property downtown is 555 Mangum. Uh, this is where Policy Genius uh, located their second headquarters uh, about two years ago, bringing over 300 jobs. And another building that is in the process of going vertical right now, anytime you've driven through downtown Durham, you've probably seen it, is uh, the Roxborough at Venable. Um, our friends at Trinity Capital are behind this development. Uh, this is going to be a, a phenomenal uh, development once it's all, all done. Um, eight stories of um, a Class A office space and, and lab space, uh, about 200,000 square feet uh, under roof when it's all said and done. Um, and then uh, working our way north a little bit, uh, North Durham is another uh, major employment, employment center for our county. Uh, Traburn Corporate Park is a, a long established industrial park there in, in the northern, northern part of the, the county. Uh, well established companies like Corning, uh, Nova Nordisk, uh, Merck have, uh, have operations there. Uh, and just outside of Traber and Corporate, Corporate Park, we're very excited about the Eno Venture Park. There's about 160 acres of largely undeveloped um, property uh, that we see great promise for as well. Um, the, the talent story in North Durham is a little bit different than South Durham in that uh, we're able to attract a little bit more of a blue collar workforce given the proximity to Person County. Uh, so we see great promise and opportunities in kind of medical device manufacturing or life sciences production um, so you really see in these three pockets, um, opportunity for life sciences growth uh, in all three. Of course, some companies are very attracted to uh, the name recognition of being an RTP, but a lot of life sciences companies also value kind of the downtown amenities that we're able to offer in downtown uh, and also some of the, uh, some of the workforce um, options we're, we're able to offer in North Durham. Uh, next Ryan, slide, please. We have tried one more minute and then we're going to move to Michael Haley. 
Got it. I can do less than a minute here. Um, so this is actually a, a nearly verbatim slide that I um, presented just a, a few, uh, a couple weeks ago to a life sciences company considering RTP. Uh, so what you're seeing here is num number of degrees um, uh, produced, uh, bachelor's level, master's level, and PhD level at the tier one institutions plus NC Central, specifically in the field of biomedical uh, sciences or biological sciences or bioengineering and biomedical engineering. Uh, the reason I wanted to uh, display this slide is to show you how regionalism works in practice for us in Durham. Um, you can see how much less competitive we would be if we only focused on Duke and NC Central on this slide. Um, so I really just want to show you an example of how, um, you know, regionalism and our regional assets really form the foundation for everything we do in Durham. And certainly all of our successes in Durham um, started at the regional level uh, to begin with. So uh, with that, I'll kick it back to Aaron and, and kick it to uh, another uh, great regional partner, uh, and Michael Haley. Thanks, Ryan. We're grateful to have you uh, with us. And I really appreciate that slide. Very helpful to see how you brag on uh, what our region can produce when recruiting talent. Y'all next up is representing Wake County's Michael Haley. He is the executive director of Wake County Economic Development and also the senior vice president at the Greater Raleigh Chamber of Commerce, both in Durham and in Wake County, the county contracts with the Chamber of Commerce to run county economic development. So that's explaining why he holds both of those hats. He's an award-winning economic development professional, having won Economic Developer of the Year from the North Carolina EDA. We're very excited to have him here uh, and to talk about what's coming in Wake County from his vantage point, where he helps coordinate between 12 different municipalities uh, and uh, county government and serves as a lead uh, spokesperson for our region. Michael? Well, thanks, Aaron. Appreciate that. Hope you can hear me okay. Great. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm going to be brief in my comments. Again, thank you, Aaron and, and Katie, for the opportunity uh, to be here with, with all of you today. Um, what, what Aaron's asked me to do is provide a, a brief overview of, of Wake County Economic Development, what we do and how we do it. So I'm going to do that. You can go to the next slide um, for, for me. I'll, I'll start by saying we are a, a program of the chamber, uh, the Raleigh Chamber, like Aaron said. Uh, we're a public-private partnership. Our public partners um, include, obviously, Wake County government, but also the city of Raleigh. We've had a longstanding partnership with around, around marketing our community, as well as NC State and Wake Tech. We support uh, economic development. Um, across Wake County and our region. You've heard a lot of regional talk this morning, um, and obviously that's going to continue with, with, with what I'm going to talk about today as well. You can go to that next slide. So how do we do what we do? Well, we've, we create a, a five-year strategy to help drive economic development in Wake County and support economic development across our region, and we're in our sixth five-year strategy. So it sort of gives you an idea of what we're doing. If you can jump, jump back there real quick, I'd appreciate it for that slide. So we focus our, our five-year strategy on five key pillars of economic development. So our first pillar is economic prosperity. That includes things like business recruitment expansion, existing industry support, what we call equitable economic development, or the, the notion of inclusive prosperity, which is really important. You've heard all of our speakers speak to that today. and it's a, it's a consistent theme for our region. Obviously, FDI is very important, foreign direct investment, international business development. And then site assessment um, is, is also important. Another theme that you've heard a lot of, of discussion about today is sort of the old economic development adage, you can't sell from an empty wagon. So we work with our 12 municipalities as well as our partners in the park to identify new sites for industrial and commercial development. Obviously, our second pillar, talent is what drives our region. Ryan's last slide perfectly sets me up for this. And we have a focus on, on talent and workforce solutions. We're really focusing here around pipeline, uh, talent retention and talent recruitment. Um, a couple important points here. One, when it comes to talent recruitment, uh, Wake County Economic Development uh, drives a regional talent attraction strategy We're with our partners on developing this strategy. We call it work in the triangle. We're in the process right now, totally revamping the strategy to take advantage of some new opportunities that have come our way, both from the pandemic, but also because of the continued growth um, of, of our community. Very quickly, we're not in the business of trying to be the workforce development solution provider. That's what capillary workforce development or Wake Tech and other great partners are for. Our role is to simply leverage their expertise and when possible or, or necessary, provide, provide leadership direction and assistance. So it's a really important distinction there. 
Obviously, brand awareness in competitive position. I know when I say this that Aaron will smile, but at the Chambers, we play to a parade, not a crowd. That's an old Chamber saying that we like to say. And so we're constantly telling, telling uh, just like what, what Ryan said and, and what Ray has talked about and other speakers have said is we've got an amazing story to tell about our community. And we're really proud to go out not only around the country, but around the world and tell that story. We, we run a national marketing uh, uh, campaign. We've run national media campaigns in the past as well. Innovation entrepreneurship. Gosh, you can't talk about our region without sort of rattling off all the startups that have had a, that have started, grown, scaled, and now are global global leads in their whether it's Cree. We mentioned Cree. Gosh, SaaS, Red Hat, Pendo, Bandwidth, etc. Those are the types of companies that are in our in our market, and and that's uh, what what we know is going to happen. We always say we're a community of what's next, and so Innovate Raleigh. It's sort of our program um, effort around entrepreneurship and innovation here in Wake County Economic Development. Finally, regional collaboration. We've said a lot about it, but regionalism is what we are. We start with that as our premise. We are a region. So that's really important to us. You can go to the next slide. Um, one of the things Katie asked us to talk about was the um, introduce some of our economic development zones within our community. Here's a map of Wake County. It's quite busy, but I think what's important to note here is this is a journey. This is the result of a long journey over about four and a half years now with Wake County and many of our partners at the municipal level, as well as our private sector partners, the notion of how do we ensure that there's widely shared opportunity across our community. So this map, our targeted growth areas map is a spectrum map um, depicting vulnerability um, or prosperity um, using a set of indicators um, obviously from red to green across our community. I think what's important to note for Wake County in this regard is every community, every municipality um, has a role to play in increasing opportunity um, for, for, our, for, our, for our residents. Um, it's something we can all get behind. This map helps, helps drive uh, policy decisions at the county and our, in our municipal level, as well as drive economic development incentives and programs. So a quick indicator there. A uh, final, final quick point here is our uh, next slide is just the indication of our of our target clusters for our community. Again, nothing new here that you haven't already seen in our presentations this morning. What drives our, our region is going to be software, life sciences, clean tech, and advanced manufacturing. Uh, those are very similar to what we've heard uh, from all of our presenters this morning. A couple important notes that I, that I would say is when we talk about some successes, you know, everything that we do is focused here, whether it's our existing industry support, our workforce development support, or our business recruitment and expansion uh, work is focused within these sectors um, to, to large measure. Some, some recent announcements, you know, again, um, uh, Steve Brantley is correct when he said, when he noted he's never been busier in his 10 years, it's certainly the same thing that I know Ryan and I can say. But just some, um, I think it's, it's important to note that yes, the pandemic has had, been, had uneven impacts, but there's also been some really exciting news for, for, so for expansions in our community. That includes bandwidth expanding their, their headquarters location here, as well as Fujifilm announcing their $2 billion um, investment in, in Holly Springs. And Vite announced uh, uh, last week or this week already a uh, um, $115 million investment in Morrisville. And Gilead, another very large global life science uh, provider, uh, um, announcing expansion of an operations locations here here in the triangle, as well as Penny Mac, another financial services enterprise um, expanding. What I think is really important is every one of those announcements I just talked about has happened in the last uh, calendar year, um, uh, literally uh, a year in two weeks. Um, so it's pretty amazing. So I'll I'll pause there, uh, Aaron. Uh, that was a really quick overview, but I wanted to save some time and keep us on track. If possible. I appreciate that, Michael. How do you Sorry. pick, just real quick, one minute, when you decide, how did you decide, if you go back one slide, Jensen, um, when you decide the areas to target, is that, you just, you said that you were on your sixth year, so six times you've done five-year plans. And part of that planning process, is that how you identify your targets? We, we do. Thank you, Aaron, for that question. It's a great question. Yes, we, uh, we work with, uh, you know, uh, partners to sort of identify that. We've done studies with, with Ted Abernathy. I know many people know Ted from his work as, as a regional partner and a local economist. Uh, we've worked with, with groups like RTI or, and, and, and others um, through the years to identify these target sectors. Um, they, they're fluid. Thank you for that, Aaron, because they're very fluid, as you know. 
uh, things grow and expand. There's specific segments within these areas, whether it's fintech or financial services within technology, the, the sort of the convergence of, of tech and engineering that creates clean tech. Um, all these things are sort of fluid. And for us, we're constantly looking at within these sectors, what is the most important aspect? Um, and that's sort of how we arrive at these. Michael, that's super helpful. I really appreciate Thank your you. time today and you joining us. I will point out to our audience that the previous speakers from Wake County and Durham County are both graduates of UNC Chapel Hill. Oh, how wonderful. Good to see you guys. Uh, we're going to move now to Joe Malazzo. Joe, if you want to push your presentation forward so you can drive, Joe's going to give it to us um, with his usual high energy, and there's going to be some pace and speed to it as we've got 10 minutes to go in this presentation. We've allotted five minutes for him. Let me introduce Joe Malazzo. He's executive director of the Regional Transportation Alliance. I have uh, often called them the most effective regional organization that we have. And for the last 20 years, uh, almost 20 years, he has led that really driving forward, putting a business voice on, on regional transportation, which brings our communities all together. So Joe, take it away. Sounds good, Aaron. Can you hear me and can you, you see can. me? Looks Thank great. You. That sounds great. Let's get moving as we say. Thank you, Aaron and Katie and everybody at the chamber for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm with RTA, the voice of the regional business community on transportation, and let's just get to it. Um, we were founded by the four largest chambers in the Triangle, Chapel Hill, Carborough, Durham, Cary, and Raleigh. And now we represent more than 100 companies, as you see, more than two dozen chambers. Please thank each of these committed RTA members. You see the website, letsgetmoving.org slash member list for their commitment to prosperity and the success of this region. The RTA mission is to deliver business leadership to get our region moving faster. That's what we focus on each and every day, myself, my colleague, Natalie Riddout, and all of our great volunteers. What does that mean? What does that entail? So when we're focused on mobility, let's talk about it. The first thing that means is we are aware of the challenges and the constraints that our government partners deal with, such as complex processes, long timelines, competing priorities, limited funding, and limited funding. That is the key thing that we always deal with in mobility. In addition today, changing paradigms, we're all dealing with, we're all familiar, work from home, work from anywhere, hybrid work. Time of day is a huge thing that I think you're gonna see more of as an issue in terms of our mobility solutions. Accelerated growth. You heard from all the prior speakers from Aaron the whole way through about the size of the region, what makes up the region. Uh, the reality is it's regardless of where it is, it continues to grow and we continue to spread out and more and more areas are a part of that. And a lot of that is due to well, housing costs, but also just quality of life and the ability of hybrid. So all that's part of that. So what's that translate into from an advocacy framework from the business community? It means we got to go faster. The projects need to come in faster. We need to be more flexible. Those solutions need to be everywhere. And we need to be thinking about resiliency, not necessarily climate, although they can be, but also just if an assumption changes does this solution make sense still? So that's a question we ask ourselves. Top priorities, well, we have three advocacy themes for the year, equity, you heard a lot of that today. Recovery, you heard that. You always hear about opportunity when you're dealing with economic development and chambers of commerce. Here are the five things, the airport, of course, sustainable funding, transit, I-40 and other freeways, innovations, and mobility solutions from a funding standpoint. Let's get right to it, RDU. We all knew the growth at RDU was going gangbusters till March of last year, and then it cratered. And then you look further ahead, you see it's down. But it's going to come back up by projections. And so we are going to be lower than we would have otherwise been, no question. But in just a few years, if you look at that line, we're going to be higher than we've ever been. And that growth trajectory, not as steep, but still moving. What's that translate into? There's still more needs at the airport specifically a half billion dollar shortfall by 2030, with the runway being the big deal for that. Two billion shortfall if you look a little further out. The business community, RTA, we've created a task force to focus on a new business model. All y'all's action item is real simple. Be aware of this funding issue, now are. And two, talk to your partners, whether it's other business leaders, the elected officials that need to find that solution. In the interest of time, let's just combine the next few of these. Transit, I-40 and mobility, just combine them real quick. Bus rapid transit, you heard it from Aura at the beginning and the connections with that the whole way through. The North-South BRT here in Chapel Hill, that's coming. Wake County BRT, four of them centered around downtown Raleigh like a plus sign, you see that. Plus, 
BRT extensions that are also being studied. And in fact, the, the kickoff meeting for that next week, RTA is helping fund that study. When you combine that, that is 55 miles of bus rapid transit opening in this region this decade. That's impressive considering we have zero miles today. So that's a massive increase in BRT. And commuter rail doesn't affect Chapel Hill, but it does affect many other communities in this great region. Studies underway, we're supporting that study. And Orange and Durham County has their transit plans underway. Please engage in those. And from an equity standpoint, zero fare, making transit more accessible. Not a Chapel Hill issue because you guys have been zero fare for 20 years. We're engaged in other conversations with that. One thing that would help with Chapel Hill is an I-40 transit priority shoulder using the inside or the median shoulder to allow buses to continue going east from Chapel Hill, the whole way to RTP and all the way over to Wake County. It would allow buses to pass slower moving traffic below 45 miles an hour. We're excited about that. We're also excited about this vision. Think rethinking our roadways into multimodal freeways and streets. We're so excited about it. We funded a study on it with NCDOT and Go Triangle. Just finished up last year. DOT has a website on it. What would this mean? Prioritizing transit on important roads like 15501 and Highway 54, 70 and so on. What does it mean? It's not anti-car or truck. It can't be because those are the ones that are the predominant users of the roads. And those are also the ones where we're getting the funding for these roads because reducing congestion for those is what triggers the state funding. But it is a transit first vision, prioritizing transit reliability and accessibility. We're excited about that. We're also excited about the 540 Beltway. Commissioner McKee works on this. We've been pushing for this for a long time. We're very excited about that Southern piece opening up in just a few years. It's also a great example of multimodal and corridor preservation. It's important. And Triangle Bikeway. That's truly multimodal. Raleigh to Chapel Hill. I'll bottom line it for you. We have to find some way to get at least the yellow section, which is a little further along, open in four years. Let's make that happen. Final thing, modernizing the highway funding business model. The problem is real simple. Some vehicles are becoming more fuel efficient. Electric vehicles are really gas, gas efficient, although they do pay a partial fee. The big challenge, everybody gets a little different gas mileage. There's only so much you can raise fuel taxes in an environment like that. Plus, when there's a pandemic, guess what? People don't drive, gas tax revenue craters. That's bad. Solution, there's a number of options. We picked an old one, old is new again, access-based user fee. What is it? It's your phone. We do the exact same thing that you do for your phone bill. You pay once a month, regardless of your usage. If you do that, and then you simply figure out how much people used to be paying in gas taxes on average and make that be the fee and then charge that monthly. Doesn't matter how much, how much you use the phone, or in this case, you use your car. It doesn't matter what car you drive. DOT could start predicting their revenue. It would be very good. So more background from this, let's get moving.org slash 2021 letter. That was our letter to members. You all can learn about that. Aaron, back to you. Hope that got us on time. Crushed it, Joe, bringing us to a close. We do like to end our meetings on time. I am sorry, y'all, if it felt like a whirlwind tour, but there's so much going on in our region. And what I'm hopeful just before I bounce to Katie for a minute of closing comments is that you think a little bit differently after this conversation. We all have the things that we do every day and we think of them based on our home address or we think of them based on our work address. But the way that this region works is 100% connected. As we said, 30,000 people more, um, 80,000 people driving into Chapel Hill every single morning and 50,000 people driving out. 80% of Chatham County works in a county other than Chatham County. Uh, the movement that we have in and out and through our community, we are dependent on each other, dependent on a shared brand, a shared reputation, and cooperation. It's a little bit coopetition. We know that there is some competitive conversations that we have with each other about our local economy with a labor shed that covers all of us and a global brand that reflects all of us. We do think that the more regional we are, the more successful that we will be. And we are grateful to have such wonderful regional partners uh, like we have uh, in Wake County and Durham County and with the RTA and with Orange County Economic Development. Our next forum is gonna have more information about university and universities engagement and local economic development and some of the things that are happening in Chapel Hill. Um, and with one minute to go, I'm gonna pass back to Katie Lewis and thank her for helping organize this exceptional event today. Thanks, Aaron. Well, that was terrific. I want to give a heartfelt thanks to all of our speakers who took the time to prepare such on-point presentations loaded with really useful information.
As we noted in the chat, we're going to share those presentations on our SlideShare account. So you'll get an email follow up in the next couple of days uh, with that link. We'll also share the video if you want to go back and listen again to some of this important information. Um, I want to thank our sponsors who made today's event possible, uh, Chapel Hill Media Group, Duke Energy and Durham Tech. Um, as Aaron mentioned, our next forum, if you liked what we had today, we've got another one right around the corner. May 27th will be our local economic development forum. So register now. It is free for chamber members. Also tune in today at 430 on 97.9 The Hill, where Aaron Nelson and Ray Trapp will discuss the top takeaways from today's discussion. Um, with that, always lean on us if you need any timely information and we are adjourned. Thank you.